Imagine standing on the frozen banks of the Angara River in Siberia some 24,000 years ago. The landscape is vast and unrelenting, the wind howling through the tundra as small bands of hunter-gatherers move across the ice-covered expanse. Among them was a young boy, no older than four years, whose fossil remains would one day change our understanding of ancient human migrations and the genetic history of two continents, Eurasia and the Americas. Known as Malta Boy, this child of the Malta Buret culture was buried with ornaments of carved bone and mammoth ivory, his people leaving behind a record of their existence in the icy heart of Eurasia. When his genome was sequenced, the results shocked the scientific world. Here was an individual who carried genetic markers shared not only with ancient and modern Europeans, but also with Native Americans. How could a boy from Siberia be an ancestor of both populations, separated by thousands of miles and millennia of history? To understand the significance of Maltar boy, we must first appreciate what his DNA tells us. His genome revealed that he belonged to a population known as ancient North Eurasians, a now extinct people that once roamed across northern Eurasia. These people left their genetic imprint on modern humans in a way that defies conventional migration narratives. At the time of Maltarboy's existence, the world was in the grip of the Ice Age, and the vast cold steppes of Siberia were inhabited by hardy nomadic bands that hunted large game. The ancestors of Malta Boy were part of this broad network of human movement, but what makes them remarkable is their unique genetic contribution to two very different populations, Native Americans and Native Europeans. The genetic affinity between Malta Boy and Native Americans is one of the most profound discoveries in anthropology. For decades, the prevailing theory suggested that Native Americans descended solely from a population of East Asians who migrated across the Bering Land Bridge into the Americas. Nonetheless, when Malta Boy's genome was analyzed, it became clear that he shared nearly one-third of his DNA with modern Native Americans. This finding upended traditional views, suggesting that the first Americans were not purely East Asian in origin, but instead carried a significant portion of their ancestry from the ancient North Eurasian people of Siberia. But how did this happen? To trace this ancestry, we must look at the formation of the population that would eventually become Native Americans. Genetic studies indicate that the ancestors of Native Americans emerged from a mixing of East Asian and ancient North Eurasian populations somewhere in Siberia, possibly in the region of Beringia, the vast, now submerged landmass that once connected Asia and North America. This hybrid population, formed over thousands of years, carried genetic traits from both parental groups, explaining why Native Americans exhibit genetic links to both East Asians and ancient Siberians like Maltarboy. When these early people migrated across the Bering Strait and into the Americas, they carried with them the genetic legacy of their ancient North Eurasian ancestors, including traits found in modern indigenous populations. And no, the Bering Strait hypothesis has not been debunked. This idea is further supported by evidence from Bachokiro Cave in Bulgaria, where some of the earliest modern humans in Europe have been found. These individuals, living over 45,000 years ago, shared genetic similarities with populations that would later contribute to both Native Americans and East Asians. This challenges the conventional view of a neatly divided East-West ancestry and suggests a more intricate web of migration patterns. Could it be that the early ancestors of Native Americans once roamed Europe, leaving behind genetic traces that persist in modern Europeans? The presence of Venus figurines and similar artistic motifs stretching from Siberia to Europe suggests a shared cultural and possibly genetic heritage. The Malta Buret culture, known for these figurines, provides a tangible link between the populations living in Siberia and those spreading westward. If these groups were mobile and connected, it would explain why genetic markers from Siberian populations appear in both Europe and the Americas. The idea that the ancestors of Native Americans also played a role in shaping early European populations adds another layer of complexity to our understanding of human migrations. Further reinforcing this theory is the genetic analysis of early European hunter-gatherers, which reveals an affinity to populations in northeastern Siberia and even some Native Americans. The Upper Paleolithic Europeans, including those from sites like Kostenki and Gravetian culture, may have been part of a broader ancient North Eurasian-related expansion that connected Eurasia in ways previously unrecognized. Some scholars suggest that these ancient populations, 
rather than being strictly divided into East and West Eurasian groups, were part of a fluid network of migrations across Eurasia that stretched from Europe to the Americas. When the Bering Land Bridge was exposed, Eurasia and the Americas became a single continent, so maybe this should not be surprising. Indeed, what if the story of migration did not move in just one direction? What if the same ancestors who eventually became Native Americans also had a hand in colonizing Europe? Genetic evidence from Kostenki-14, a 36,000-year-old individual from Russia, suggests that populations carrying ancient North Eurasian ancestry were already present in Europe long before the Bering migration. Kostenki-14's genome also reveals a deep genetic link to both ancient North Eurasians and modern Europeans, raising the question of whether the movement of these ancient North Eurasians stretched not just from Siberia to the Americas, but also westward into Europe. What makes Kostenki-14 particularly interesting is that his DNA also contains traces of an early divergence from the common ancestor of both Western Eurasians and East Asians, meaning he belonged to a population that had already started differentiating from other groups tens of thousands of years ago. His genetic legacy also links him to later populations that formed the backbone of modern Europeans. By studying Kostenki-14 alongside Maltaboy, researchers can better understand how the ancient North Eurasian component was introduced into Europe and later spread through subsequent migrations, such as those of the Yamnaya Steppe herders. Kostenki-14 also has one of the most remarkably handsome skulls ever discovered. One of the patterns to emerge was that many of the earliest European modern human skulls from the last Ice Age, commonly referred to as the Cro-Magnon people, sat statistically very close to Aboriginal Australians and Papua New Guineans. Among the remains from the very ancient Russian, from Kostenki-14, is one of the earliest and most complete modern human skulls from Europe. Kostenki-14 is one of the earliest and most complete modern human skulls from Europe. In Howler's original multivariate analysis, the skull sat statistically very closely to the first Australians, but his DNA tells a very different story. Kostenki was already pure European. Nonetheless, it is generally accepted today that multivariate analyses comparing ancient and modern skulls do not necessarily indicate a stronger biological relationship between similarly looking skulls. Instead, it reflects such things as the kinds of patterns that we see in many early modern human fossils that are comparatively large and robust when compared to later Holocene populations. The significance of this ancient North Eurasian genetic legacy extends into modern times. Northern European populations, including British, Scandinavians and some Eastern Europeans, have been found to possess a genetic link to Native Americans. This is not a simple coincidence, but rather the remnants of ancient migrations that carried genetic material across continents. If the ancestors of Native Americans contributed to early European populations, it would explain some of the unexpected genetic overlaps seen in modern populations. This hypothesis forces us to rethink the traditional narrative of human expansion and migration. Rather than viewing migrations as one-way movements, we must consider the possibility of continuous exchanges, where populations moved, settled, and mixed over tens of thousands of years. The genetic evidence suggests that early humans were far more interconnected than previously believed, with populations influencing each other across vast distances of thousands of kilometers. In summary, the story of Maltaboy and his genetic legacy challenges our understanding of human prehistory. It suggests that the ancestors of Native Americans were not simply the last great migrants into the Americas, but were also part of a much older and more complex web of migrations that shaped the genetic landscape of both the old and new worlds. As new genetic studies continue to refine our knowledge, we may find even more surprising links between the first Americans and the ancient Europeans who called the icy tundras of Eurasia their home. The past is never as simple as we assume, and the journey of our ancestors was far more intricate than a single straight path across the Bering Strait. The discovery of Maltaboy and the unravelling of his genetic history force us to rethink long-held assumptions about human migrations and the origins of different populations. His existence challenges the simplistic view that prehistoric humans moved in linear, isolated migrations. Instead, his genes reveal a complex web of interconnections, where people moved, mixed and adapted to new environments over tens of thousands of years. 
The genetic legacy of the ancient North Eurasians did not disappear with them. It persists in modern humans across multiple continents, a testament to the deep, interwoven history of our species. What does this mean for our understanding of genetics and ancestry? It suggests that the roots of human populations are far more entangled than we often assume. The fact that a boy buried in Siberia 24,000 years ago shares ancestry with both Native Americans and Europeans underscores the shared heritage of all humans, reminding us that our ancestors were travelers, innovators, and survivors whose movements shaped the genetic landscape of the world we live in today. Indeed, the story of Maltaboy serves as a powerful reminder that our histories are not separate, but interconnected, stretching across vast distances and deep time. As researchers continue to decode ancient genomes and uncover new archaeological evidence, the story of Maltaboy will undoubtedly evolve, revealing even more about our ancestors and the ways they shaped our genetic destiny. But for now, his legacy remains a striking example of how one ancient child, lost in time but rediscovered through science, can illuminate the deep and complex history of the human journey.